Hi everyone. Many people have been asking how to animate sprites since the launch of Game Builder Garage. Today we'll take a look at a few different ways to add animated 2D elements to your game. Let's get started. In this first example, I'll show you how to change the texture that's applied to an object upon the press of a button. Here's an example of that technique being used in a game that I'm currently making. When I press the B button, the mouse opens its mouth. I'll be moving through the steps quite rapidly, so don't forget you can pause if you need to. For now, let's go to free programming and start a new project. In the programming screen, select objects, special objects, and texture. This is how we'll make the first frame of our animation. Now we have our texture, let's scale it up a little and go into the texture node on settings. In this screen, we'll be drawing our texture. I'm gonna draw a pig, but of course you can draw anything you like. Don't forget, you can cycle through a selection of guides with this button if you need some inspiration. Once you're done, we can quit out of the texture screen. If we press play now, we can see our little drawing, but there's no animation, so let's fix that. Going back into programming, we'll add a button, which can be found in input, button press, and from here, you choose a button of your choice. I'll be using B in this example. We're not gonna connect it up for now, because first we're also gonna add a not node on, found under middle, logic, and not. These two node on are gonna be key to animating our sprite, but even more important is creating another texture to animate between. To do this, click your texture node on and copy it. From here, go into this new texture node on and modify the existing texture. With that complete, it's time to connect up our node on. First, we'll connect the button node on to the visible port of our most recently created texture node on. This means that this texture will only appear when the button is pressed. Now, from that same port, drag a connection to the receive port of the not node on, and then from not's output to our original texture. This will mean that this texture will only appear when the button is not pressed. With that done, the final step is to overlay our two frames so they'll appear in the same place in the game screen. Let's test it out. Perfect, we created an animation in the most simple form. This could then be simply connected up to a moving object node on, such as a box, found in objects, special objects, moving objects, and box. Let's scale up the box to be the same size as the texture node on and create a stick node on to control our newly created box. This is found in input, stick movement, left stick, and in this example, I'll choose left right. With that, let's connect it up to the x-axis port on the moving object node on to finish up. We'll connect both texture node ons to the top port on the moving object node on. We also need to go into the settings for the moving object and turn off visible. And then we'll need to go back into both our textures and turn off texture face for everything except Z center. Let's head back into the game screen now to test it out. Amazing, we now have a nicely animated and controllable character. This would be a very solid starting point from which you could get a lot more fancy. In this next example, we'll create a sprite that animates by itself without the need for any input from the player. In the programming screen, let's select objects, special objects, and texture and we'll make the first frames of our animation. Once that's done, we'll copy it and make a few changes to the copied version so it has something to animate between. Next, we'll set up the logic for the animation. We'll need a constant node on, found in input, a timer node on, found in middle, and lastly, just as in our previous example, a not node on. Now, let's connect them all up. Starting from the left, drag a connection from the constant node on to the timer node on's input port. From the timer node on's output port, drag one connection to the visible port on the most recently created texture node on, and the other to the input port of the not node on. Finally, connect up the output port of the not node on to the input port of the first texture node on. Before we press play, make sure both texture node on are overlaid if you'd like them to appear in the same place. Although, in this example, I wanted to make the pig jump, so I offset the second texture slightly. We'll also need to adjust a few settings in the timer node on. In this example, I moved the continue output option to 2. Just as in the first example, this could be very easily expanded upon for use with a player character by connecting it up to a moving object node on and stick node on. Both examples I've shown here can be applied to character node on or fancy node on as well. And these examples can be expanded out to have multiple frames and multiple inputs. And that's everything for today. Let me know in the comments what you would most like me to cover in my next tutorial. There's a link in the description to the Video Dojo Discord, which is a great place to share your creations or to chat with other game builders. I regularly stream GBG, so why not subscribe so you'll know as soon as I go live. See you next time. Bye bye